Okay, hi everyone. So the recipe we're going to be looking at today is uh, a humble sautéed potato, but it uses a range of really interesting spices, so it takes it to a new level. Uh, the uh, ingredients that are used for this recipe are primarily South Indian in terms of their flavor. So uh, we use coconut oil and um, there are a couple of stages to the recipe. The first stage is the sauteing of the potatoes in a pan with coconut oil and a few spices and then later on we work with a tempering which is what gives it its unique flavor. So uh, some of the spices that we use today are unusual enough that you would have to go looking for them at an uh, Indian grocery store or you can also, if you don't have one in your area, you can also find um, Indian groceries online. Uh, Patel Brothers, that's spelled P-A-T-E-L, uh, the website is patelbrothersusa.com, they um, deliver the most unusual and uh, wonderful and exotic of Indian spices right to your door. So uh, to start we will heat up our pan. It is uh, advisable if possible to use a good quality non-stick pan for this recipe, uh, something like this. However, if you don't have uh, something like that then you can uh, also use stainless steel. Uh, you are likely to get a little bit more sticking on the bottom. You would need to be careful about how high you turn the heat up. If that happens, you can deglaze the pan with just a tiny little bit of water to make sure that the spices don't also stick and burn in the pan. So the first thing we do is we heat up our coconut oil. Coconut oil has been getting a little bit of a bad rap in the press lately uh, in terms of using it internally. However, um, the South Indians have been cooking with coconut oil for thousands of years. Um, so I would say everything in moderation. Make sure that you don't use it in excess. But certainly the amount that you use for this recipe, which serves six people, is uh, more than okay. So we, uh, the coconut oil is solid at this temperature but it melts just as soon as it hits the pan. So we let that melt. One thing about these potatoes is that they have been par cooked. So they are about 75% of the way done and your, the sauteing just takes them to 100%. You wouldn't want to saute them from raw, uh, not only because it would take a tremendously long time, but um, they would also, they also possibly scorch in your pan. So you want to either boil them or microwave them or steam them, but get them to 75% uh, of the way done. So the coconut oil is heated up. You're going to go in with the potatoes. You're going to make sure that your pan is big enough to accommodate everything, all the potatoes. Just get them lightly coated in the oil. This is four cups of potatoes. Uh, in here I've used uh, the small baby Dutch potatoes. You can use any kind, but it is advisable to use a waxy potato, so something like Yukon Gold or these Baby Dutch, something with a thin golden skin. Uh, if you are using russet or uh, that, that sort of potato, then you would definitely want to peel it. You can also use red uh, and you can leave the skin on. As you can see, these Baby Dutch ones have got the skin on. If I use the larger Yukon Gold, then I usually peel them. You're just getting them nicely coated in the oil. And then we're going in with the first lot of spices, um, three of which are familiar, just salt, black pepper, and red chili flakes, and ground turmeric, which is uh, also becoming a very mainstream spice these days. The turmeric helps to stain the uh, potatoes a wonderful golden color, which also makes them really appealing to look at. The chili flakes are optional, just depends on amount, the amount of heat that you want in the dish. So we sprinkle over the salt, the ground black pepper. The pepper also lends a fair bit of heat, so if you want to leave out the chili flakes, that's fine. And the turmeric. Make sure that the turmeric is spread evenly so that you don't get clumping, you don't get one part 
more golden than another. And then you want to just stir that nicely. Make sure that those spices get evenly distributed. You can see the golden color spreading through. Really looks so pretty. Quite honestly, even just these four spices give this so much flavor, you could even leave it here and not go to the second stage. Even this is pretty tasty. This could also be a way to dress up leftover roast potatoes that you might have left over from a roast dinner. Pop them in a pan and add these spices to them. Okay, so now that they're nicely coated with all the spices, what you want to do is turn the heat to medium, medium low, and cover it and just let it cook until the potatoes are all the way cooked through. So now we're going to look at the second stage of the potato recipe, which is the tempering. So tempering is a uh, technique that is used frequently in uh, Indian cookery. And in this video cookbook series, we're actually going to be doing it twice, once for the lentils and once for this recipe. Uh, in uh, the local language, tempering is usually called either bagar or tarka. You would come across the word tarka, spelled T-A-R-K-A, probably quite often in a restaurant menu, especially with a tarka dal. And when it is brought to you uh, on the table, you would see um, some uh, colored oil and spices, uh, usually um, on the surface of the of the dish and that is the tarka or the tempering. Uh, the technique of tempering is basically to bloom spices in hot uh, oil or uh, some butter or ghee or any kind of um, hot fat and as soon as the spices make contact with the hot oil they quite literally bloom. Their flavor uh, increases tremendously and uh, they usually are at their optimum when they're treated in that way. Uh, temperings are usually best done in the smallest possible pan you can find uh, in your kitchen. Uh, the, the main idea is that the surface area should be really small so that when you go in with your oil it creates a little bit of depth without uh, spreading all over the pan. By doing so, by creating that depth, the spices then have a little bit of um, oil to swim in, rather than uh, having to use a larger pan and move the pan around and ch uh, have the spices chasing the oil. So it's much better to go for a much smaller pan. You get this sort of pan either online or at cooking stores. It's actually a measuring cup with a handle that also, because it's made out of stainless steel, works uh, works very well to, uh, for tempering. Uh, Indian grocery stores, if you have one in your area, uh, such as in Atlanta, Patel Brothers or Cherians, uh, they both have uh, an aisle dedicated to uh, Indian utensils and you will find tarka pans, which are uh, small pans that look like this, uh, that work very well. Some of them have a rounded bottom so if you have a, a flat top electric uh, or induction cooktop at home, then you would need to find a small stand to be able to put them on. But if they're flat bottom, then you won't have any problem. So the uh, tempering that we use for this recipe is, uh, as I said before, very typical South Indian ingredients, particularly uh, two of them, or three of them actually, including the coconut oil. Uh, so it's coconut oil which has been used on the potatoes themselves, as well as in the tempering. If you want to use coconut oil only in one and then uh, a flavorless oil in the other, you can use the... Um, a flavorless oil such as grapeseed or canola or vegetable in the potatoes and coconut oil for the tempering. Uh, so that's the, that's the hot fat that we're going to use. Uh, and then we put in these which are black mustard seeds. Uh, so black mustard seeds are a very, very typical South Indian um, ingredient and you'll find them by the bag uh, either online or um, another online source that you can use is www.ishopindian.com. That's also another um, 
site that will deliver Indian ingredients to your door. So these are black mustard seeds and these go into the hot oil once it's melted. Uh, the feature of black mustard seeds that you look out for is you've got to make sure that they go into really hot oil. You make sure that they don't go into any sort of cold oil because they will take a lot longer to come up to temperature. Once they do, they start to pop and you'll hear a slight uh, crackling noise from your uh, from the inside of your pan. If you leave them there long enough, they will start to pop and jump out of the pan. So you don't, you definitely don't want to get to that stage. You want to just hear that slight crackling and then you go in with the other ingredients, which in this case are ground ginger. Uh, if you can't get fresh ginger, you can use ground powdered ginger in this recipe, same quantity. And um, uh, cumin seed, which is common in many cuisines. And uh, these these are fresh curry leaves. Uh, curry leaves are also available at Indian stores, usually by the bag. Um, these are from my plant at home. They have a deliciously herbaceous, slightly citrusy uh, fragrance. And uh, even in the bag, when you buy them in the bag at the store, they will be on the sprig like this. So all you have to do basically is just pull them off the sprig and um, pop them into your pan at the right time. Uh, curry leaves, a lot of people don't know what to do with them uh, other than recipes such as this and the bags come with a, a tremendous amount of curry leaves in them and you don't know what to do with the rest. So the best way to store them is to freeze them. You would um, rinse them very lightly, pat them completely dry with paper towels and then you can either freeze them on the sprig or on the stem or you can take them off and put them into a paper towel lined airtight Tupperware box, one of those types with the clips on the side and um, put them in your freezer and the main thing that you need to be aware of is when you are using them in a recipe from frozen, you need to make sure that they come out of the freezer right before they go into the pan. So don't take them out prior to cooking in an effort to be more organized which is commendable but what will happen is that they will turn black uh, as soon as they've been left to, out to oxidize for any length of time more than say a couple of minutes. So you want to go to the freezer, grab them, pop them in and put the box straight back as soon as you can. Uh, but don't try and dry them, don't try and use dried curry leaves, they have 10% of the flavor and it's really a, a waste of money. So when you buy the bag, use what you, use what you need to and freeze the rest. So we're going to start with the tempering now. So you just light your gas, your heat underneath your little pan and you go in with the coconut oil or any other flavorless oil if you prefer not to use coconut. You can also use expeller pressed coconut which doesn't have the coconutty flavor. So you just let that melt. So this is a one and a half cup size little pan. Anything one to one and a half cup is perfect. So this is two tablespoons of coconut oil that I've put in here and as you can see once it's um, melted it's giving you a, a kind of few millimeters of depth in the bottom of the pan so it's enough for the spices to be completely immersed in the oil which is a key to really effective tempering. So that's all melted, we just want to make sure that it's nice and hot. And then we go in with the mustard seeds first of all. Can you hear the, so the slight crackling has already started. And they start to pop. And then you put in the cumin seeds, the curry leaves, And then before the ginger goes in, you take it off the heat because the ginger tends to splutter because of all the moisture in it. So 
so that's your tempering. And then this whole thing gets poured over the top of the potatoes in the next stage of the recipe. So we're back with our potatoes, which have been cooking away. Give them a little bit of a stir. If they can develop some nice golden brown edges, that makes them even more appealing and even tastier. So you do want to give them a stir every now and then so that each, all the sides make contact with the hot pan. And then we've got our tempering here, which to remind you again is coconut oil, black mustard seeds, cumin seeds, curry leaves, and fresh uh, grated ginger. I'm just going to pour that over the top. Get all of that out there. And then you just mix it through so that it's nicely evenly distributed. You want to make sure that the tempering isn't clumping in any particular part of the pan and that it's evenly distributed all the way through. If your potatoes still have a ways to go to be cooked, make sure that you're cooking it on low heat after you've put in your tempering because if you have it on high heat, the spices will burn and you'll get a bitterness. So you can keep it on low heat, you can cover it and let it go for a longer time if that's what you want. So that's our tempering mixed in with the potatoes. And we're just going to let that cook a little bit longer so that the spices have time to meld and marry. And then we're going to serve it up. <laughs>